Australia's native species, a beauty to behold. Well, if you're one of the lucky people to see the full extent of it. We've all seen a kangaroo or two, maybe an emu, perhaps even a koala, but the beauty of this landscape went so much further. For a while now I've been dwelling on this, slowly working up to making a decent set of points. The state of Australia's environment is an issue that seems surface level at first glance, but on a deeper level goes so much further. Our attitudes towards the environment track a history that extends beyond the imperial invasion, and the ultimate aim of this video is to summarise why our methods of farming are a bit stuffed. On that note, I won't beat around the bush. Our environment is being swallowed year on year. Industrial scale farming clears land for cattle, the most inefficient livestock and a historically aspirational food of British colonialists, and logging corporations destroy forests for timber, expanding further and further into native bush when it should be recovering. It's hard to see just how prevalent cattle grazing is in Australia. While writing the script, I was going to show the country from a bird's eye view, demonstrating how much land is being dedicated to cattle. But frankly, it would look like the whole continent. Instead, I've got a map showing the density of cattle in certain regions, courtesy of a study by Carl Barron. To sum it up, the eastern and southern seaboards have the highest cattle density, and more arid areas have a lower density. That is to say, there's still cattle in those regions. Basically, there's two types of farming methods, pasture grazed and natively grazed cattle. Both are bad for the environment, for reasons I'll explain. In total, this red meat industry uses 54% of Australia's landmass for grazing, and only contributes to 3.5% in weight of our average daily diet. That's over half the entire continent, excluding the grains used to feed these cattle, contributing to 3.5% of our diet in weight. So yeah, this was weird to me too. Turns out the cows are about the most inefficient livestock British Australians could have chosen to eat. While the cow did well in Europe, where there's an abundance of rain and nutrient-rich soils, Australia is essentially the opposite. An animal bred for a superweight environment requires a metric tonne of water and nutrients, so we have to use a lot of native rainforest and arid grasslands to grow and eat cattle. Almost all of our biomes have been crushed as a result, but more on that later. Coincidentally, Australia has one of the highest meat consumption levels per capita. The beef and cattle industries hold overwhelming power and have billions of dollars to throw around at marketing campaigns and public discourse. There are a lot more water and nutrient efficient options. If you're a meat eater, look into kangaroo. It's got a stronger flavour and a well done roux steak tastes pretty great. Some white meat livestock is also decently efficient, such as chicken or pig. However, if you don't want to put up with going halfway, eat veggie patties. I know this discussion gets a bit dicey on the internet, but veggie burgers are getting comparable in price now, and they're genuinely tasty. Just running through the options for other cow products, for milk, plant-based alternatives such as soy, oat, and macadamia milks are great. In terms of butter, olive-based spreads are a great substitute. And finally, in terms of cheeses, yeast-based options are catching up. The biggest benefit of these alternatives is that they only use a fraction of the land. On a weight-for-weight -weight dietary basis, most crops use anywhere from 2-20% to of the land coverage of beef. The reason for this is simple. Where in meats, the energy of grass goes through an intensive process to be turned into flesh, eating the plants directly is crazy efficient. The loss of energy is negligible, and the resulting water and land use is way smaller. Imagine freeing anywhere from 40-49% to of Australia's land and having that be healthy natural bush. Whichever way you go, we should agree on one thing current state of cattle farming is pretty resource intensive. We're wildly inefficient. The biggest contributor to a loss of forest is the red meat industry. So why else are pastures and grazing so bad? It's a legitimate question. We have a tendency to look at pasture land and introduce grasses and think, they're plants right, what's the difference between grass and native bush? It's three issues. First, grass provides next to no biodiversity. Every animal suited to an Australian environment dies when plonked down on pasture. This includes once abundant marsupials and native rodents who tilled the soil by digging for their foods, as well as the thousands of insects that have evolved to live with Australia's bush. Pollinators, detritivores, plants themselves, you name it, everything suffers. Second, all of the dead and rotting material that provide nutrients to the soil is being sapped away from that land. When livestock consumes grass, they take those nutrients and get milked or turned into a steak. Rather than decomposing and returning these nutrients, the cattle products are sold at your local Woolies. 
the waste we produce after the meal is treated and those nutrients go into the ocean or somebody's garden as fertilizer. In most cases, it's not returned to the land it came from. So eventually this land becomes inhospitable, sapped of nutrients, contributing to further desertification. This leads into the third point. You know how the news goes into a frenzy every summer? How we seem to be experiencing bigger and bigger droughts? Well, that's because we have no protection. Pasture land provides no buffer for water and natively grazed cattle destroy the understory of forests. Essentially, healthy bush acts as a big net for water that's evaporating. It traps this moisture and prevents evaporation through shade. This means everything's a little more protected from drought. So what happens when there is no shield? When the upper story of forests are essentially destroyed? Australia gets drier and the temperature swings more rapidly. This means the worst droughts on record. And that, coupled with our changing climate, means some crazy weather. So we have to get our forests back. There are a couple of ways we can do this. The most important one is pretty easy. Stop eating cow products. Find an alternative like roux or the plant-based stuff. We just need these huge industries to stop clearing land for more pasture. Show them what's up by restricting them your money. Second, vote for politicians who genuinely care about national parks and sustainability. I urge you to do your research. Just be careful, not all environmental focused politicians were born equal, and some have shady links to not so savory groups. Thirdly, question what all these huge single story homes are for. It seems the suburbs are expanding horizontally as far as the eye can see. The way in which we are utilising land is super inefficient. We need denser, more resource efficient buildings. On another note, if you're using lumber in a project, use recycled or sustainably sourced timber. It's a similar way to tackle the cattle industry. Restrict logging corporations and housing developers of your money. There's another solution I want to talk about, perhaps the most important when it comes to developing a connection to the land. Cozy up to our bush. If you have the ability to get to these parks and see what a healthy environment looks like, you'll be able to recognise what's wrong with the way we farm. We're getting more and more disconnected from healthy biomes, living in suburbia or farmland with introduced plants and pets. It's hard to empathise with the bush, our animals, when we're so far from it. Hell, we could even think about getting rid of our English gardens, slowly phasing out our European pets, and fully embrace our natural landscape and wildlife. One step at a time. As a bit of a side note, there's a couple of feral free parks across Australia I highly recommend visiting. The one near me is a place called Mount Rothwell. This park replicates Australia's environment pre-colonialism and has completely done away with feral animals. It's genuinely shocking seeing how many critters are jumping around the place when it's free of cats and foxes. The variety of marsupials that used to call our scrub home is huge and Mount Rothwell has established populations of potaroos, bandicoots, bedongs, adamelons, quolls, and fasca gales, to name a couple. So I guess I should say, don't be depressed about it all. You can do quite a lot, but it will take a bit of effort and a lot more cooperation from our government. You do your best, and importantly, urge our policymakers to do theirs. Anyway, that's all for today. It's a bit different to what I've been doing. I don't want this video to be a blanket condemnation of farmers and loggers. If any of you fellows are watching this video, I really appreciate it. We're born into a pretty structured work life, and it's far from perfect. Whatever alternatives people come up with will be equitable. But I hope in providing some solutions, I can also provide some reassurance. I may cover similar issues in the future, but it's kind of hard untangling the values and ethics obscuring some of these issues. The script for this video actually started out because I got frustrated at the state of feral and native animal ownership, but to be honest, I think that's a bit of a niche issue in comparison. If this video does well, I might tackle all that, or other things such as climate change. All in good time. Thanks for sticking around this long, and I appreciate the click. Cheers, cobbers. Come on, guys. Oh, I see a mutiny. I oh, see you, losers. <laughs>